What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out 17 minutes of WWE's most embarrassing losses. Now, sometimes, for whatever reason, usually it'll be Vince McMahon's booking or his creative ideas, whatever the team would come up with, they would have somebody lose and they would have them lose to someone that they shouldn't be losing to. Now, of course, obviously, if it's a heel, there would be some tactics involved to, you know, help themselves win in that match. But even then, when you still look at it, you're just like, wait a minute. He just lost or she just lost to this person. For example, we recently just checked out storylines that we wanted to end in WWE. And I remember when Shane McMahon was going on his best in the world storyline and it was it was getting to the point of just like okay what are we doing here where is this really leading to and shane was out here beating wrestlers that he shouldn't be beating i think i believe he ended up pinning roman reigns now of course he had help with drew or whatnot but the fact that he still pinned roman reigns at the time was ridiculous or the fact that miz couldn't win in the feud with shane mcmahon is also ridiculous despite him having help Shane should not be pinning top guys. That's all I'm saying. So I don't know if that will be in this video. It probably should, but we're going to check this out. Appreciate all love sport. Let's get right into it, man. One, two, this is on. In wrestling, every now and then we'll see a top star lose to someone we weren't expecting. Like a career mid-carder or someone on the ascent. Some of these results had fans jumping for joy and in shocked excitement, while others had us all scratching our heads. We'll be covering a mix of both today with defeats that were done by pinfall or submission only, as we list countless shocking and embarrassing upset losses in wrestling. The nature of The Undertaker's mythical character meant that he rarely lost, uh -huh. especially to non-main eventers. <laughs> Yeah, he, Not only that, but he barely months, lost. There would be a new monster heel ready to challenge him. And though Taker usually came out on top, there were a select few that got the better of the phenom. Okay. Such as Mabel at King of the Ring 1995. Jeez. Other infamous examples include Vladimir Kosov uh -huh. and SmackDown in February 2009 in what has to go down as the most embarrassing defeat of Taker's career. The fact that it was a clean loss makes it all the yeah. worse. Clean loss. Given how hard he was a clean loss, <laughs> might I add. <laughs> push coming in, fans may have thought the great Carly would beat Undertaker, but surely not in as convincing and dominant a fashion as how it went down at Judgment Day 2006, as the Phenom did the honors clean for yet another lumbering oaf. A lumbering oaf. What the hell? Are you kidding me? I can't believe this. As the biker taker, upsets were more common. Oh. <laughs> including three notable losses via pinfall. First to Rikishi on Raw in December 2000. Oh! Second in a hardcore title defense versus Maven on SmackDown in February 2002. Shout out to Maven doing this thing on YouTube. Love to see it, man. <laughs> And third to Matt Hardy in a Fool's Count Anywhere match in October 02. Here comes the pain! Oh! Matt Hardy into the cover! Uh, Hardy picks up the win! Of course, with the help of uh, Brock Lesnar. So, it makes sense in some of these situations because he obviously was getting attacked or hit by somebody else. So, that's how he got the win. Even with uh, the Maven situation, Maven got the win, obviously, off the distraction. But... Undertaker kicked out even though he was a second behind. That's how you kind of protect him. But in certain situations, he shouldn't have been losing to, you know, the people that he did. But we knew why because Vince was trying to get Vladimir over. He was trying to get the great Kali over. But still, eh, when you look back at it, did he really need to lose? <laughs> Before he was the top heel that ruled Monday Night Raw in the Ruthless Aggression era, where he almost never lost, Triple H racked up a number of shock defeats all within a three-year stretch. For example, in August 99, his former girlfriend China scored two pinfall victories over the game in successive weeks on Raw. Pop! 
Fuck! Ha 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 Next was a controversial <laughs> loss to The Godfather on SmackDown in March of 2000. That's crazy. He was losing a lot, but then he made up for it when he was uh, on Monday Night Raw, the, the, the terror of doom, when he had evolution with him. Oh, he made up for lost time. He wasn't losing that shit, that title for a minute. <laughs> Who could forget the famous match with Chris Jericho on Raw a month later for the WWF title? Yep, fast in July count. That year, the cerebral assassin found himself on the losing end against the Brooklyn Brawler of all people. Yep. Jericho was involved once again, this time on SmackDown in May 2002, where he helped Reverend Bring it back. beat the game. So many good memories. <laughs> In the same month, Tess gained his second pinfall victory over Hunter. In April 2001, Triple H defended the Intercontinental Championship against Jeff Hardy on SmackDown. Damn! Jeff upset the game once more at Armageddon in 2007. Uh-huh. I remember this. One, two. And then on SmackDown in November 08. The game's first upset loss after his reign of terror ended came versus Shelton Benjamin on Raw in April 2004. Yeah, the <laughs> 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 yeah, I remember this too. <laughs> JR has won in the win column over Triple H occurring on Raw in April 2005. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> in the midst of his undefeated streak, the Samoan bulldozer Umaga knocked off the game on Raw in August 2006. Mm -hmm. A month later, and it was Vince McMahon's turn to defeat Helmsley for a second time in his career. Other surprising <laughs> losses came at the hands of Legacy uh -huh. in August 2009. Look at Rhodes, crossroads, then crossroads, and Legacy. That's Even crazy. Even on SmackDown in January 09. How time is flown. Cheap shot. So far, we've covered wrestlers with a bunch of upset losses in their career. But now let's look at someone with only a few. That being the beast, Brock Lesnar. Uh -huh. Eddie Guerrero first upset Lesnar when Latino Heat rolled up on Brock on the Go Home Smackdown before their match at No Way Out 2004. Eddie then did it again at the pay-per-view to win the yep. WWE Championship. Beautiful moment. Even though they were unexpected, we won't count Seth Rollins or Big Show's wins over Brock as upsets, since those two were already multiple-time WWE and WCW champions respectively when they pinned Lesnar. Instead, we'll go to WrestleMania 36, oh. and Drew McIntyre convincingly put away the Beast in short order, winning the WWE title in the process. Just wish it was in front of a crowd. That's the one thing I can always, you know, look back on. Like, damn, he, he deserved to have that win in front of thousands of people going crazy. Eh, man, sucks. Claymore! A fourth Claymore! Two, three, McIntyre. A year before his first world title win, Cody Rose slayed the beast in two separate yep. outings on pay-per-view in 2023. Yep. And we can't forget when Brock lost to Goldberg at Survivor uh -huh. Series 2016 after only one minute. And I watched this live because I was like, oh, this is going to be good. And when it happened, I was shocked. I I was shocked because I thought they were going to, you know, give Brock the, the win here. But I was completely shocked. This this threw me for a loop. 26 seconds. <laughs> 
So far, we've looked at top stars who surprisingly put over that middle level card talent. Let's take a break from this list now to highlight times where local competitors and jobbers picked up rare victories over established main roster wrestlers. Like when Barry Horowitz finally won a match in 1996 after a lengthy losing streak. <laughs> Sean Waltman defeated Razor Ramon on uh -huh. Raw in 1993 to become the 1 2 3 kid. Believe it or not, Stone Cold Steve Austin once took an L courtesy of two enhancement talents during a handicap match in December 1996. Here comes the bulldog with a clothesline. Wow. Colin Delaney was getting decimated on WWE ECW for months before at last picking up a win in May 2008 and had a contract in the process. <laughs> being destroyed in a squash match by Braun Strowman, <laughs> yep. James Ellsworth returned to action on SmackDown in October 2016 by pinning WWE Champion of the Time AJ this. Styles in a non-title bout. <laughs> An example of a job actually winning a belt occurred on Raw in November 1998 during Dwayne Gill's match with Christian for the light heavyweight strap. This happened again when Leon Ruff pinned Johnny Gargano and NXT for the North American Championship in November 2020. Santino Morella posed as a fan yeah, I remember this Umaga too. for the Intercontinental title on his first official match with the company. Yeah. But <laughs> the Rock was one of the most giving top guys of any era. <laughs> Hit him with the F5. Woo! Not just in terms of those he helped elevate and make stars by putting over in the ring, but also when it comes to underneath or mid card level talent, he laid down for throughout his time as the WWE's top babyface. He loved to sell. The Great One did the job multiple times for the likes of Chris Jericho. Jericho benefited from a lot of these, man. Yeah, I can't believe it. D damn Jericho. Chris Benoit. Yep. Jesus Christ! Rob Van Dam. Oh my God! <laughs> Edge and Christian. Oh! He, they didn't hit him at all. <laughs> And believe it or not, two of the McMahon family. Vince's elbow, please. This is a dead on rock. And this is. Wait a minute, don't tell me this. Wow. The McMahon's are just the tip of the iceberg, though. As in 1999 alone, the People's Champ was turned over by Billy Gunn twice. Look at this. That's a famous. Nobody's going to get up from there. It's crazy just realizing how many guys he put over, obviously course with the help of some assistance but it's just crazy to see that hardcore holly the big boss man that's crazy don't tell me! <laughs> the most famous upset loss, however, mm -hmm. came courtesy of the Hurricane, hurricane. War in March 2003. Yep! <laughs> Three notable jobs The Rock did for lower card wrestlers during his rapid ascent in 1998 occurred versus Mark Henry at Judgment Day. <laughs> tag match during the summer. Around. 
and against the lethal weapon Steve Blackman on Raw in February. I'm afraid you're right. <laughs> During his ascendant at the height of his popularity, it was rare to see John Cena lose. It happened when the story called for it, but usually only to the big stars. It was seemingly rarer for John to do the favors for those who were mid carders at the mm -hmm. time, or even non wrestlers, but it actually happened more than you might think. With the, of course, the, the assist from other outside factors. Classic. Yeah. Everybody got a low blow John Cena to get the win. Oh, the mist. Cena did a lot to help The Miz and CM Punk get over, including losing to them on numerous occasions. Goddamn Jericho. It's always Jericho. <laughs> Damn. A young Bray. Yep, classic money in the bank. Yep. Cena's also done multiple jobs to wrestlers such as Seth Rollins. Yep. Why would he do that? Speak. <laughs> Wade Barrett. They just didn't do the job for them when they needed it the most in that uh, Nexus versus WWE match, but we're not going to talk about that. Carlito. Yep, I remember this too. There go Jericho. Of course. Jericho's all in this video, man. Screwing over people. And Justin Gabriel. Woo! Beautiful move. But perhaps John's most upset shocking losses <laughs> <laughs> Heath Yeah, I remember this unfortunately too. Orlando Jordan. Not this way! Miss McMahon. Yep. And the great Carly. Clean, no less. <laughs> Cena also put over Kevin Owens. Yep. Woo! That was dope match, too. As well as Daniel Bryan. Mm -hmm. SummerSlam. Solo Sikoa. Bro, Solo killed him. <laughs> Solo murdered him, bro. Murdered him, bro. Shinsuke Nakamura. I remember this one, too. AJ Styles. Mm -hmm. Great match. This was tough, too. Rest in peace, Bray. Braun Strowman. He's put over. He's put over a lot of people. Obviously, once again, a lot of those involve help and stuff. But in his later career, like 
later years, it was he was losing clean for the most part. Dean Ambrose. Looking for the attitude adjustment. Well done, boy. Ambrose. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check this out was great, the man. video of WWE. This was awesome, bro. It, it it really put in perspective of a lot of these wrestlers that we I know we tend to like, oh, they never really lost. But in actuality, they did lose. Now, granted, of course, once again, you had to have that caveat of, oh, they lost because of this person helped. I get that. But at the same time, you know, it does give that heel character that extra rub. You know, like, oh, damn, they, they got a pinfall victory over this person over john cena under over the undertaker and stuff like that so you need that you do because if you just have your top guys win all the time it it loses his effect of you know anybody legitimately beating them potentially so but this was definitely dope man comment down below let me know what's your favorite upset from wwe ever like you remember watching it live and you just lost your mind because you didn't think that person was gonna win appreciate all love support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on next one peace